hope you enjoyed your Memorial Day weekend. We're back rock and rolling first day in the month of June on a Wednesday hump day, bringing you the hottest show on the streets, number one forum for all things Bama. That being in my own words, yours truly, Stephen M. Smith, touchdown. I'm a Bama magazine. However, you may be listening to us today, whether it's by cell phone, tablet, iPad, computer, TV, we got you covered right here, bringing you the show from the magic city of Birmingham, streaming this to you on YouTube and speaking of the channel you know what to do stop all that you're doing hit that subscribe button right now give us that thumbs up that like right now make this your network your channel your platform and space to talk crimson tide we also got you covered here on facebook and twitter as well streaming to you the show turn all of those post notifications on hit that little bell so that way you miss nothing when it comes down to bama but a good show today Really good show. SEC coaches are in Destin, Florida for, for meetings, and Nick Saban spoke on Tuesday. Jimbo Fisher spoke today. Both guys are just saying, let's just stop talking about this quote-unquote feud. Let's just forget about it. Let's just get over it. We're ready to move on. So we'll get to both of those. We'll get to their comments and how both guys are just ready to have October 8th speak for itself on the field. We'll get into a little bit of Dallas Turner conversation as electric, dominant, elite, special as Will Anderson is. And the Terminator is Dallas Turner is about to take his game to a whole different level as he is working with a uh, private sack specialist this offseason. And then last but not least, we got some guys, John and I, that we're going to put on the clock as these will be the five guys at summer workouts, fall camp. This is the biggest fall camp and summer workouts for these five guys. They got to step up. They got to do their thing. They've got to pop off now. The time is now for these particular individuals. And definitely want to hear from you today, the passionate fans of Bama football. You can do this by calling 205-448-1358. Number to call in to let your voice be made known on the show. 205-448-1358. And one more time, 205-448-1358. Want to hear from you. That daily super chat goes $75. Appreciate the support coming from you the Bama faithful, but we get to now topic number one of the conversation, John, and like I mentioned before, SEC coaches convening on to Destin, Florida for these meetings, and um, in these meetings, a lot of conversations are had, whether it's you know, the structure of the conferences, divisions, uh, whether you want to go to nine games of conference play or whatever that may be, or the, the, the talk about the playoff format, just so many conversations happen within these meetings, but we all know the biggest conversational piece coming in was Nick Saban and Jimbo Fisher, right? Like, what would the seating be like for both coaches? Would they have Nick and Jimbo sitting with each other or near each other, beside each other? Would they have Coach Saban on one end and Jimbo Fisher on the whole other end? Like, what would the seating arrangement be like? Would both coaches speak at the same time? Would both speak on different days? Just all of this build up from uh, the dust up feud uh, situation uh, beef misunderstanding whatever you want to call it, it there was so much build up to what are they going to say in the in this sec meetings because the thought and the question was going to be brought up right people are going to bring up the whole situation with what coach saban said about texas a&m what jimbo fisher said about coach saban a lot of this was going to be discussed and talked about and uh, for both coaches it just seems like they're ready to move on and let october 8th do all the talking for them uh, coach saban sounded much like that on tuesday today jimbo fisher sounded very much so like that uh, nick saban mentioned hey i never said anybody did anything wrong um, you know, I had no problems with Coach Fisher. I got no problems with Jimbo, no issues with Jimbo. I've said all I need to say. I I'm ready to move on. I I'm done with this. I'm ready to move on. If you look at Coach Fisher saying that there's no feud, I'm ready to move on. I've answered this. I've, I've stated all I need to state. We're ready to just get on with football, get on with getting this action taken care of on the field. And 
it's going to be good because, I mean, whatever they did not say in those meetings, it will be said on the football field. We all know this. Whatever that was not said in Destin, Florida, will be made known inside Bryant Denny in Tuscaloosa on Saturday, October the 8th. And uh, once again, if, you, if I'm CBS, that game will be in, should be in prime time, deserves to be in prime time, 7 p.m. Central under the LED lighting feature in Bryant Denny. So interesting stuff there. I mean, people expected maybe a little bit more coming from Coach Fisher's side. I mean, from Coach Saban's side, we, we pretty much knew we were, we were, we were going to get this. Saban was going to go at it with, there's nothing wrong with me and Coach Fisher. We good. Uh, well, we may not be good, but you know, we're ready to just settle this on the field. We ain't going to talk about it here in these meetings. These meetings are about other stuff. So we're going to talk about this other stuff. We ain't going to bring up, you know, the whole hoopla in these meetings. And then Coach Fisher with his statement of, you know, I I'm moving on also. Hopefully – the two have been able to kind of privately squash this out. I know Kirby Smart had an interesting thought about it because he mentioned how you know, it's, it's, it's very difficult when you're competing against these guys every single Saturday, every single week during the fall and football season. You can't necessarily be you know, chummy and reach out and talk to different coaches when you're competing against them every single week. And Coach smart spoke on how you know they don't call him he doesn't call them it's kind of a common place where you don't reach out and talk to those guys it's kind of how it is but hopefully some good things took place there from the meetings october 8th continue to have that date circled alabama texas a&m the whole thing will be handled will be done will be answered there on the field and i'm excited to see that take place once it takes place but we're gonna go to our first break here on the show don't touch that dial we're just getting started upon our return we go to the phone lines we grab your calls your thoughts your chats your interactions a dialogue with you the bama fans it's coming right after this you're watching In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith. Brought to you by We Own the Fourth Quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace today by visiting weownthefourthquarter.com. Throw them foes up. I'm Malachi Moore. And you're watching In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith on Touchdown Alabama YouTube channel. Nine have teamed up and released the Alabama Team Paper, which is a video yearbook they've put out for sale direct to fans. Now, for the first time, small dollar purchases from the fans can support the players as a group as well as a great cause because $1 of every subscription payment is donated to the Boys and Girls Club of America. Be a five-star fan base and support your team and a great cause with Team Paper. Check it out at teampaper.com slash Alabama. Remember the taste of Grandma's delicious sweets? Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes brings back those precious memories with just one bite. Each cake made from scratch. They make the perfect dessert to share with family and friends for any occasion, and ordering is easy. Visit Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Click the online store and shop. Then pick up your fresh cake at the kitchen in downtown Homewood. Order yours online at Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes, making memories from scratch. We are back to the action here, folks, from the break on a Wednesday hump day, first day in the month of June. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen M. Smith, Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Happy to have all of you checking us out on today. Guys, shout out my man Jamie Wilhelm with that $4.99 in the Super Chats. Appreciate the love there coming from Jamie to the show. And we go to the phones where you get your calls. Call segment brought to you by the Blue Wrench Gang, 205-448-1358. Number to call in, 205-448-1358. We grab this call here. You're live on the show. What's going on? How we feeling? State your name and where you calling from? Hey, Stephen. This is Mike from Kentucky, man. How you doing, brother? Doing great, Mike. Doing great. I mean, the summer enrollees are here. I'm ready for these summer camps to get started, man. I'm doing fantastic. Yeah, man. I, I was watching Feinbaum today, and, and Sankey 
was listening to a conversation Feinbaum and Sankey were having about NIL. I mean, dude, they made it sound like they were taking the brain out of a shrew. And it's really not that complicated. You know, it's off the rails. And why don't they just do what the NFL did? Remember back in the 80s? I'm going to give you an example, bro. Remember back in the 80s when the Dallas Cowboys were America's team? Right. Just kicking butt and taking names all day long? There was a reason for that. They were spending more money than anybody else. And then the NFL stepped in and said, wait a minute, fellas. We're going to have to cap your salary. You know, why don't they, I mean, let's just face it. These boys are going to get paid. So let's put a few parameters on it. And like, you know, like a first top 10 NFL draft get pick, you're worth this much money. Seventh round draft pick, you're worth this much money. Why don't they just take that approach to it and bring some sense to it and give each team, but you know, they're going to have to come up with a figure that's fair for everybody not this, just the big deep pocket schools. Like I mean, I don't know. I'm not even going to name a school. It'll sound like I'm picking on. But just say you got X amount of money. If you want to draft six or seven five star players and, and spend all your money on six players, or you can recruit 15, 20 players and pay them this much money. You know, it'll put the coaching aspect back in the game. What do you think, Stephen? I mean, it, I don't think it's all that comical. To, I mean, you know, complicated to put some. Uh, you know, put some guidelines on it. You know, give them all a set amount of money of how much they can spend, and if they want to blow it all on four or five five star players, let them do it. What I do mean, you think, Mike. I'm, I mean, Mike. I'm right there with you. I mean, it, it shouldn't be that hard. It shouldn't be that hard. All the minds in that room, uh, whether it's the SEC or whatever conference we're talking about, it should not be that hard. Mike, Mike I agree with you. All right, brother. You have a good night, man. I appreciate my. Show. Absolutely. Appreciate Mike from Kentucky calling it. It shouldn't be that hard. It really should not. Gotta shout out my man Bill from New York. Big Bill with that 501 in the Super Chats. Appreciate my man Bill from New York here. Talk, uh, donating to the show. Helping us out right here. But it shouldn't be that hard with, with NIL. It really should not. But I know Commissioner Sankey of the, in the SEC and all the coaches have been talking about it, discussing it. Another conversation has been, uh, should you remove the divisions from the SEC and kind of do like the Big 12 does, have everybody play everybody, more conference games, uh, and then your, your best, your top two teams play in a championship game. Uh, uh, and, I mean, uh, Saban's always been for having nine conference games anyway. Not saying that playing against teams like Western Kentucky and the Citadel Western Carolina, you know, those games, those teams don't matter because obviously they're trying to build their programs. But when you look at football is a business, but football is also entertainment. And U.S. fans, y'all drive the entertainment. You guys drive the content. You are the most, you consume the game the most. And for you as a fan, if you look at Alabama versus the Citadel, if you, or if you look at Alabama versus Ole Miss, you know, which game are you going to watch? You're going to watch Alabama versus Ole Miss. You'll check the box score for Alabama versus the Citadel. So more games where you have the eyeballs and the attention on uh, display. So get to that nine-game conference-only schedule. Now, will that happen? Remains to be seen because most of the times when you have these meetings, they discuss things, they bring it to conversation, but – you know, it takes a little bit longer for it to get to pen and paper and into fruition. But we'll see what happens. We'll grab this phone call here. You're live on the show. What's going on? How we feeling? State your name and where you calling from? Stephen M. Smith. What's going on, Justin Riley? I've uh, been a long time, man. <laughs> hey, man, what's going on, Justin? Man, listen, you're talking about, you know, the driving forces of Alabama. And uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to mention it just yet today on today's show, but the ultimate driving force of Alabama football, Coach Terry Jones uh, Sr., has stepped down. And I just got to acknowledge that. The man's an icon, an absolute icon. You, you can't separate Alabama football with, you know, from him. And if you talk to many players like you and I have throughout the years, the first name that comes up in any conversation been Coach TJ. So I want to give the man props for an amazing job, you know, 30-plus years just a, a cornerstone man and we need to definitely sing his praises and it's just hard to see him step away uh from the program you know i know he can't go forever but you kind of feel in the back of your mind he probably could if he wanted to but 
uh, I really do feel like they need to erect a statue somewhere in the complex, you know, to honor this man properly. I mean, absolutely. When you talk about Coach TJ, this is the last of the OGs. This is seriously the last of the last of the OGs. When you think about Coach TJ, he is the first person in that weight training facility. I mean, he's the one that several guys talk to when uh, things are going right in their lives, things are going wrong in their lives. If somebody need to, if somebody to pat and on the back or a swift kick in the butt, like Coach TJ's the guy. And, and he did that for over three decades in Tuscaloosa. So when, when you talk about losing OGs from Alabama football, I think the general of all of those OGs, people will talk Scott Cochran, true. People will talk Burton Burns, absolutely. People will talk Bobby Williams, sure. But Coach TJ, that is that is the OG of the OGs. Like he he grandpa pop. Like he the OG of the OGs. Yeah, without a doubt. You know, I know that we've seen a lot of success throughout the years, uh, but if you look at the look at it as a whole, Alabama, and of course Nick Saban is the greatest of all time. He's done phenomenal things, but without Coach TJ there as this cornerstone, a lot of this doesn't happen. And then too, if you go beyond or before the Saban years, uh, if not for Coach TJ, we don't get through a lot of those those bad years with scandal and probation and just all the the, the hard hits we had to take those years. He just he kept the program alive with uh, one big heartbeat. So. Got to give the man his props. Absolutely. Appreciate those thoughts to come from, from my man Justin Riley, Coach Terry Jones, longtime strength and conditioning coach, served at the University of Alabama for 30 plus years. Uh, some, some of that, you know, with Coach Saban, some of that, you know, pre Coach Saban, but Coach TJ Cornerstone. And like I mentioned, one of the final OGs in this program putting in that retirement. So definitely wish him the best on that retirement. He'll have fun with those grandbabies, but Alabama football will definitely miss his presence within that locker room, shaping and molding and developing the next generation of athletes. But we're going to actually go to a topic right here, and that is on Will Anderson and Bryce Young. Alabama can make some serious history in the Saban era for the 2023 NFL Draft. And the reason why I say this is Nick Saban at Alabama has never had Two has never had his guys go one and two, number one overall and number two overall in the NFL draft. He has a chance to have this with Will Anderson and Bryce Young. According to Mel Kuyper Jr., draft expert extraordinaire for ESPN, he has in his projection for next year's draft He's got Will Anderson as the number one overall player uh, on his board. And he's got Bryce Young as the number two overall player, the number one overall quarterback on his board. And, and, this, and this, is, this, this is crazy because you know, these are the best two players, arguably, in college football. And uh, if these two end up going one and two, coming from Alabama, another piece of recruiting uh, fine art in the hat of Coach Saban. So definitely want to keep your eyes on that moving forward as we go throughout the summer workouts and the fall camp going into the 2022 season is can, Bra can Will and Bryce stay ahead of the curve to where they're number one and number two together coming off that board there for the 2023 NFL draft. But we go to a break right now, folks. Don't touch that dial when we return. Uh, Will Anderson is the Terminator, but there's a reason why. You better be ready for Dallas Turner's second season. We'll talk about Turner after this. You know what we do at the start of the fourth quarter. We throw them foes up, but now you don't have to wait until the fourth quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace at WeOwnTheFourthQuarter.com. It's the first and only logo that captures the essence of all Crimson Tide players and fans as we represent the legendary Alabama football fourth quarter dominance. Get your four-finger bling necklace right now at WeOwnTheFourthQuarter.com. Get yours today and stun on them haters. 
Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. All right, people, we're back in. Rocking and rolling here from the break on a Wednesday hump day. Hottest show on the streets talking to your Bama. Football news, in my own words, yours truly, Stephen Smith. Touchdown, Alabama Magazine. Got the man John Ivory in the production studio. And right now, you look at one Dallas Turner. I had a conversation about Will Anderson. Obviously, he's the Terminator, right? He is the undisputed, unquestioned leader, captain of the Alabama defense. He is still Will for Mr. Anderson for a lot of you. And then... Uh, the young, the, man, the young man is the real deal. Like I mentioned in the previous segment, in the previous call segment, uh, he is looked at as the number one player, overall player, of Mel Kuyper Jr.'s big board for the 2023 NFL Draft. But as great as Will Anderson is, and he has his handprint and cleat print on Denny Chimes forever as the team captain, we're going to turn our attention to Dallas Turner for a second because – Dallas is about to turn up. He, he's about to take another major level in terms of sacking quarterbacks. People forget that last season, right, Dallas played 15 games. He played in all 15, but he only had three starts. So Dallas Turner was not a full-time starter. Yet, the former five-star from South Florida still had eight and a half sacks though he was not a full-time starter. Steele had 10 tackles for loss, though he was not a full-time starter. Steele made the freshman All-SEC team uh, and the freshman All-America team for the Football Riders Association of America, though he was not a full-time starter. So think about this. If he did all of that and he was not a full-time starter, imagine now he's going to be a full-time starter He's coming off one side of a defense ready to drain a quarterback's clock out. And uh, this offseason, Dallas Turner has been working with a private sack specialist. They call him the sensei, the sack sensei, down there in South Florida by the name of uh, Javon Grupe. And uh, Coach Javon here is training D linemen, and outside linebackers, edge rushing, bend, uh, bend moves, uh, edge bending, uh, fierce hands, violent hands, quick feet, fast explosion. Get to the quarterback in however many ways you can get to the quarterback. And uh, we're going to have Coach, I'm looking to have Coach Javon on the show Friday to kind of sort of discuss the technique, the details, and all that he's handing or giving to. Dallas to make him be even more productive, even more dominant, even more fierce on the field in this upcoming fall. Because if you're watching these videos right now on screen, I mean, Dallas is get off in these videos. Nasty. The get off in the videos, the first step, the explosion, the violent bending, the agility. If you watch his hands, he's knocking those bags out the way. Like he is, he is submarining through the bag like dude hungry. Dude is flat hungry. Dallas Turner is flat hungry. And uh, it's going to be just that much more exciting seeing his numbers. We know Will Anderson's going to get his. That's self-explanatory. But what Dallas Turner can do in complimenting that and adding to that as a full-time starter, and that's going to be unreal. And uh, these two, these two together, you can't double-team both. You can't chip both. One of these two is going to get free. 
And uh, then, you, then you look at having other guys that are going to get free because of the attention that both of these two are going to draw. But as dynamic as Will Anderson is, and he is, keep your eyes on 15, Turner. The work he's been putting in this offseason with the Sac Sensei. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this, to, to this fall camp. More importantly, I'm looking forward to this regular season, especially in the SEC games and in the matchup against Texas down there in Austin. What Dallas Turner is going to be able to do on the field. When he was not a full-time starter, you saw the production, you saw the hunger, you saw the willingness to learn, you saw the attention to detail, you saw Will Anderson take him under his wing, you saw Nick Saban speak highly of Turner, and this is him not a full-time starter. Him being a full-time starter? Watch this brother work. Keep your eyes on that. We're going to go to a break here, folks, on Touch That Dial. When we get back, we return to the phone lines, folks. Blow us up with your calls, your thoughts, your conversations. We continue the dialogue with you, the Tide fans, after this. Don't touch that dial. Call in right now as we're taking your calls up next on In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith. Brought to you by We Own the Fourth Quarter. Visit weownthefourthquarter.com now to get your four-finger bling necklace. This is Chris Rogers, 2009 National Champion. You are listening to the baddest, when I say the baddest, sports show in the state of Alabama. In my own words, you know, yours truly, Touchdown Alabama Magazine, don't touch that dial. Every sports fan deserves the proper representation. Wit Will Sports introduces to you the title towel. Wave that title towel in the air like you just don't care. In support of Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Only $9.99 and it lasts a lifetime. Head on over to WitWillSports.com and get your title towel today. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. We're rocking and rolling, people, on a Wednesday. Back in to the action from the break. Hottest show on the streets, dropping your Crimson Tide football news. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen M. Smith of TDA. And we got a couple of super chats to get to. So how about Katera 1983? Katera 1983 with that $5 donation. And then my man Bill again, baby. Big Bill from New York, the Big Apple with that $5 donation. And then Kelly Swag Nona Davis with that $10 donation in the Super Chats. Appreciate the love and support coming from all of you helping us out right here on the show. Now, Plow Jogger wrote in the chat, if Pete Golding has that deer in the headlights look, he needs to go ahead and walk away in shame. Hopefully, Pete Golding will not have that deer in the headlines look. All I'm looking for, for for Coach Pete Golding is creativity where the blitz packages are concerned. We know he's got that, that, that twist stunt look with the inside backers, but have some pressure packages for more of your outside linebackers, more of your defensive ends, whether it be defensive ends or defensive tackles. Just different pressure looks and hit home on those looks and have those looks dialed in at the right time. That's my only thing with Pete Golden. Different pressure looks, call them at the right time, and just hit home on them. If he does that, he's going to be fine. If he does that, Pete Golden is going to be just fine. We see what he is as a recruiter. He's getting the young kids in here. That's what he's supposed to do, especially the guys in the, in the Louisiana, Texas area. So he's doing that. All he's got to do, hey, get different pressure packages in your system and hit home with those different packages. But we go to the phone lines, have a take your calls. Call statement brought to you by the Blue Wrench Gang, 205-448-1358. Now want to call in, 205-448-1358. We grab this call through your live on the show. What's going on? How we feeling? State your name and where you calling from. Stephen, Bill from New York, always a pleasure to talk to you, brother. 
Absolutely, Bill. What's happening, my man? Well, you know, to, to, I just want to comment on what you said before about, like, you know, uh, Will Anderson. I'll tell you the truth. I think it would be even worse to lose Will Anderson than it would, to lose, than it would be to lose Bryce. And I'll tell you why. I, I mean, like, I think Will Anderson is really one of the best players to ever be in Alabama. I think he's that good. He's so freaking good, and as much as you know, as much as I liked Dallas, you know, and I, I, I talked to you, I called your show and talked to you about him, you know, when he first came on the field. That guy is great, but Will Anderson is really something special, to the point where I think if he was a junior this past season, I guarantee he would have been the first guy drafted. That guy is like a modern day Von Miller, and I think better. I, I can't say enough good things about Will Anderson. And then and also, like, God forbid we lose Bryce. And Bryce, again, I supported him from day one to the point where I, I wanted him to start inst- in, instead of Mac. You know, I, mean, I was wrong, but that's what I wanted. But uh, w- between Milrow and Simpson, I think these guys are both, like, going to be really good. And if our offensive line isn't like the 2021 caliber, I think both of them can sort of make up for it too, like Bryce does with their mobility. And Milrow's got like the, the speed. Simpson, I told you, I think he's like a Doug Flutie. And uh, <clears throat> no matter how you slice it, we look good. We look good. You know, we're a great team. And, and I, I see Jimbo. He's talking about, oh, the feud's over. Oh, please. Please, we're gonna wipe him out this year. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna spank him like like a puppy. You know, I mean, we're gonna just kick their butts. Uh, you know, again, just wonderful to talk to you. you I told I mean, one more time. I'm gonna tell you, you're going straight to the top. You're going place. Sure. You're going straight to the freaking top, Stephen. God bless. Yeah, I don't love my man Bill from New York there with that call, and I agree with Bill. It's Will Anderson is such a difference maker defensively. And and Will and, and so Bill compared him to Von Miller. I got a friend of mine that compared him to Von Miller and Khalil Mack. He's a modern day of, of, a, of a mixture of both of those two guys with what he can do as a speed, edge, pass, rush, and a complete outside linebacker. I'm just saying the combination of both Will and Dallas, that's insane. Especially both of these two healthy coming at your neck? You, you ain't trying to mess with that. We're going to take this call right here. You're live on the show. What's going on? How we feeling? State your name and where you're calling from. How's it going, Steve? It's Tobias out here in Fresno. How you doing, sir? Doing fine. Doing fantastic. My brother, how are you? Man, yeah, bro, I'm, I'm good. I'm feeling good. Um, Memorial Day, always a somber time to kind of reflect on how blessed we are in this great nation. Um, Wouldn't want to be in any other place on the planet, Um, but here, a place where we can, you know, debate about something as as, uh, trivial in the larger scheme of things as, as football and sports, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of cool. Um, and so I hope you had a great uh, Memorial Day. Uh, how was your Memorial Day? I should have asked. I'm sorry. Tobias, I mean, it, it was awesome. I got a chance to spend some time with my dad, who served seven years in the Navy. Got time to spend my, some spend some time with my uncle, who retired. My uncle put in 25 years in the Army, so I was between a Navy guy and an Army guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's cool, man. My daughter, she's talking about going to the Navy. She, uh, so I'm really proud of her. But anyway, so I, I, I've been listening to – you know, a few shows in my spare time, and I'm still confused, man. I'm I'm not understanding this whole we're scared of Texas A&M. It's like every year we're scared of something. Every year, this is it. Nick Saban is done. He's nervous. He's He's a little child that's nervous that He's losing his team. He knows he can't compete. Alabama money can't compete with. Te- I mean, I'm thinking this has to be just entertainment. 
I cannot believe any of these people actually believing anything they're saying. Even someone was talking about he lost the recruiting class. This is not the first recruiting class, you know, if you want to call it a loss, that Alabama, you know, wasn't number one in the last 14 years. But Texas A&M, they have 30 athletes. We had 26 come in. They had 332. We had 322. The average quality of our athlete is higher than their athlete. And last year, A&M was not one. Then it was one. And the year before that, A&M was not one. Georgia was one. And before that, A&M was not one. Alabama was one. So I'm just not, uh, I, I guess I shouldn't even, I'm, I'm talking myself off the ledge with this, man. It's like, you cannot believe that Texas A&M is going to do anything against us this year. They're going to come out excited, pounding their chest. I mean, I watched the game last year. We had a brand-new quarterback, Bryce Young, who had barely won at Florida, by the way, because he was what? Young. This was his first year. So he had not been in big environments like that. And so, okay, what was it, 42 to 38 or something like that? You you think this year they're coming into Tuscaloosa? Stop it. Please stop it. And then with the NIL, I hear what my guy Mike is saying about salary caps and all of that. I don't know what the answer is. I know that with kids, Ain't no reason to put no cap on the kids' salary if the coaches ain't got no salary cap. The kids make as much as they can make. And if people are crazy enough to pay them sight on scene without tra- seeing their true value, if you dumb enough to give me $50 million, $50,000, $50, sight on scene, and you don't, you don't know whether I'm a pan out or not, because you want your school to have the quote-unquote number one class. Guess what, Steve? It's not about recruiting a class. You have to develop a class. And with the transfer portal as it is, some of those guys that you paid $50,000 to, $100,000 to, guess what they're going to do next year? They're going to transfer. And any good businessman is going to say, pump the brakes. I got to get sudden on my return. So, you know, I hope that they can figure it all out. I know they can if they want to figure it out. The other thing that I'm interested in, Steve, and I'll drop off here um, and throw some money in the chat, but I'm really interested in the SEC kind of pounding its chest um, in a good way to say, listen, we can go this alone. Um, Because with the dissolving of divisions, it will create more uh, creativity and scheduling. I think right now, I looked at all of the SEC schedules. It looks like Arkansas probably has the toughest schedule. I mean, man, uh, they, 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 they have some serious guys to play. Um, but I'm going to be interested to see how this uh, finishes out with Texas and Oklahoma coming in in a couple of years and how our divisions play out. I'll say this. This is my prediction. Alabama, I think I put it out last week. I'm going to put it out again. Alabama is going to beat Texas A&M by 42 points in the fall. It's going to be a bloodbath. Alabama is going back to the SEC championship. They are going to play somebody other than Georgia this year. I'm putting that out there. Alabama is going to have a 2020-ish type season. That's my prediction. It's going to be ridiculous. And, yes, Will Anderson, Bryce Young is not going to go as high as Will Anderson in the draft, and we're just going to keep on rolling. You know why? Because that's what we do. Roll time. Appreciate Tobias for that call right there to the show. And uh, people just love controversy, man. I mean, uh, you can give people the truth and research, but that's not going to get people to go ooh and ah. What gets folks going ooh and ah is controversy. 
People love controversy. People love chaos. But uh, I got to shout out my man Agar Thomas with that $50 donation. The Super Chats. And that means the daily Super Chat goal of $75 has been met. Appreciate Agar Thomas and all of you donating, helping out your show, your network platform, channel, and space to talk Bama. But now we go to a cool topic here and this is on your alabama football alums in the nfl going through organized team activities or otas and uh, boy oh boy mac jones Tua a tongue of aloha patrick's or tam the second man they look good mac jones i mean every day in otas it's, it's a different player whether it's kendrick Bourne, whether it's devin mccordy whether it's uh, Devontae Parker, they're all saying, Mac look good. Mac's the man. That's our leader. That's the guy we want. We like this guy. He got that swagger. He got that confidence. I, I like Mac. He can look like a pro pro, for real. He done lost that stomach. Mac look good. Like, every time you turn, there's a different veteran player for New England talking high on Mac Jones. What this means is he's preparing himself to have a big year two for the Patriots after a rookie season where he set some franchise rookie records as a quarterback. When you look at Tua Tagovailoa in Miami, yes, he's got his critics. He's got people that say Tua can't be consistent. He's already underthrowing Tyree Kill. Look at the videos coming out. You know, he doesn't have the arm. He doesn't have this. He doesn't have that. But even more so than the critics, you've got the teammates going, oh, Tua can bomb that thing. Oh, Tua throwing that ball out there. Have you seen Tua's arm strength? Have you seen his accuracy? Have you seen where he can put the ball anywhere he wants to put it at? Like, this is the real deal. You got Coach Daryl Bevel, who's worked with uh, Russell Wilson, who's worked with Matthew Stafford, saying, you know, I'm excited about what I have in Tua, what we can do in Tua. So as much as the critics are on him, his teammates and the people around him are that much more supporting Tua and looking forward to his uh, third season here in the league. And then Patrick Sertan the second, you know, to start week two of OTAs on Tuesday, uh, he picked off Russell Wilson in practice. <laughs> picked off Russell Wilson and took it back for a touchdown, and the entire Broncos defense went crazy. Pa Patrick Sertan, last season, as a rookie, 58 tackles, led the team in pass breakups with 14, had four interceptions, made the Pro Football Riders Association all-rookie team, and he's expecting big things in Denver, or for Denver, this upcoming season. So, yeah, uh, big ups to Mac Jones, uh, Tua Tagovailoa, and Patrick Sertan. Also, the charges dropped on Jerry Judy. Thank, thank goodness. Charges dropped on Jerry Judy. He has returned to OTAs, the Broncos. So now he puts that crazy situation behind him and can move forward. But we take our final break here on the show. Don't touch that down, folks, because when we get back, we get into the five players I'm putting on the clock for Bama. They got to go hard, summer workouts, fall camp, and this upcoming season. This is a big year for these five guys. We'll get into them after this. If you're an avid Alabama Crimson Tide fan and you love to flaunt it, then show your Alabama Crimson Tide support by grabbing the Alabama sneakers. They feature bold Crimson Tide graphics, so no one will be able to question where your allegiance lies. When you add these sweet sneakers to your Alabama Crimson Tide collection, go to stsfootwear.com and use the code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. That's code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. Go to stsfootwear.com and get your Alabama sneakers today. Look at all these great players in Touchdown Alabama magazine. Man, wait till I turn up this year. I'm gonna be on the front cover. But what if Will goes off? Or Joe, DeMarco, Chris, Tim, Christian. Don't wait. Order now at touchdownalabama.com or call 833 833- 
483-2624 today. All right, baby, we're back into the action here, folks. On a Wednesday, hump day, number one form for Bama. Football news, in my own words, yours truly, Stephen Smith, Touchdown to Alabama Magazine. Happy to have you guys checking us out. Guys, shout out my man Tobias Brookings from Fresno, West Coast, baby, with that $50 donation in the Super Chats, helping us out here on today. And before we get into final topic of conversation, got to remind you of TDAware.com. That's TDAware.com. So to get all of your swagger, sauce, strip, cultural, clothing, fashion needs here, check us out right now. Do your shopping right here, TDAware.com. And you can start this in summer workouts, fall camp, the 2022 season. Just get yourself set up with your gear to cheer on your favorite program. Uh, link is in the description, TDAware.com. That's TDAware.com. Show that support for Coach Saban. The University of Alabama, the student athletes, and us here at Touchdown Alabama Magazine. But now, we get into five players that I'm putting on the clock right now. The heat is on for these five players. They got to go hard. They got to turn up. They got to snap, in the words of my producer, John Ivory. They got to straight snap in summer workouts, fall camp, 2022 season. This is, this is a big year for these five guys. And... Starting off, guy number one is DJ Dale. He he got he he got to go hard in the summer. He he got to, because you, you think about this, people are already looking at Jamil Burrows needing to be the starter at that nose tackle spot. And I'm for one, I'm definitely on that Jamil Burrows train. Choo choo, definitely on that. Uh, you got guys that look at big Jaheim Otis needs to be on that defensive line due to how he performed in spring ball. You got other guys out there that people are looking at, but DJ Dale, him being senior year here, came in as a freshman in 2019 and did some really good things prior to him getting hurt. And ever since he hurt his knee, it's kind of been you know up and down you know, for Dale, but now with him working with Coach Leonard Stevens, Coach L, step-by-step -step performance training here in the Birmingham area, He's healthy for the first time in a while. Looked at as a team leader defensively. DJ got to go all out hard, all out in. Summer workouts, fall camp, 2022 season. If he's trying to have a solid draft stock for, for 2023 NFL venue. And I'm not saying that DJ is going to have 10 sacks. Of course not. But at least – the very least, Dale's going to give you three to four sacks. Three to four at the least, bare minimum, at the least, from that inside interior pass rushing perspective. He got to go all out this year. DJ Dale on the clock and that on that, that defensive line perspective, that's number one. Number two, you got to look at here, Jalen Moody. It is time for the man Moody at that linebacker position. He's entering now fifth season, came in that 2018 class from South Carolina, hasn't had many opportunities in his career, but now this is his moment. This is his shot. I mean, you've got young guys behind him like Deontay Lawson, Kendrick Blackshire, uh, guys like Demoy Kennedy, Sean Murphy, um, you know, G.I. Campbell. you got young bucks behind you, but here is Jalen Moody, the guy that's been there, Done that, got the T-shirt, can tell you the whole life story. He got to go hard this year. Starting summer workouts, cracking folks down. Fall camp, doing his thing. 2022 season, playing like a man possessed out there, making hits, making tackles, filling gaps, creating turnovers, making plays out there. Big season for Moody, where his draft stock is concerned as well you move on down to the third guy that's on the clock Treshawn Holden at wide receiver he's got a pot now because you got young guys in here with Isaiah Bond Kobe Prentice Shaz Preston Christian Story Jojo Earl uh, you got, uh, you got um, you know, Kendrick Law Aaron Anderson Tyler Harrell in here uh, Jermaine Burton in here. Ja'Cory Brooks. we got several receivers in here. Trey Sean Holden's got to pop now. He's got the size at six foot three. 
It's got the experience, been in here since 2020. Got to break out and pop now. Your Treshawn Holden. He's the third guy I'm putting here on this clock, starting off in summer workouts. Fourth guy going on the clock is Malachi Moore. Malachi's got to show I'm back to my freshman year in terms of that playmaking ability. He's battled through some tough injuries. I understand that. It's difficult. It's hard. It's tough. But talking to Justin Woodall, former Alabama DB, Malachi's back. Healthy, speed back, agility, footwork, explosiveness, all of these things. U.S. fans, I myself, we got to see this on the field. He's got to prove I'm back, baby. 13 from that 2020 season, I'm back. I'm out here, and I'm making some serious plays on this field because healthy back Malachi Moore unlocks so much for this defensive secondary. Malachi Moore on the clock, number four. Number five, last but not least, on the clock, J.C. Latham on the offensive line. It's his time to be the anchor and offensive tackle. He came in 2021 as the most college-ready guy of that hall of offensive line when Alabama brought in that class. Had a good spring, but now is the time for Latham. Now, Alabama brought in Tyler Steen from Vanderbilt. They think he can be the guy to anchor that left tackle spot. J.C. Latham, it's his time at that right tackle position. It's his moment as a former five-star it is his moment. This is his opportunity to go out there and get this done. There, there are other guys that could have listed here in these five, but the group of DJ Dale, the group of DJ Dale, Jalen Moody, Treshawn Holden, Malachi Moore, and uh, uh, J.C. Latham were the five I went with just for you know different reasons. But as always, folks, you want the best in news, notes, information, and coverage on your favorite program, that being the Crimson Tide. You can get this by accessing the Touchdown Alabama Magazine app. You download the app from the iPhone App Store if you're rocking Team Apple. Google Play Store if you got the Android phone. Now, for your audio needs, check us out iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Spreaker, TuneIn Radio, Overcast.fm or iHeartRadio. If the good and gracious Lord sees fit, I'll try to be back on Friday continuing the conversation. That is Tide Football. Remember, Bama fans, you can purchase individual copies of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Have those sent to your door. That link found in the description. If you're trying to get the fresh edition, print edition of TDA, the magazine, here's what you do. You go to touchdownalabama.com. You click join, become a member or a subscriber today. That link in the description also. If you're trying to get your hands on the four finger bling necklace, four finger bling jewelry, courtesy of our guys that we own, the fourth quarter.com. That link in the description as well. But appreciate you guys, the outstanding Crimson Tide fans, for all the donations, the phone calls, the chats, the love, the dialogue being had with you. You guys are incredible. Appreciate my man John Ivory in the production studio doing his thing on the ones and twos behind the scenes. And until next time, folks, husbands, love your wives. Wives, appreciate value. Those husbands, children, you guys continue in the summer. Doing the right thing, fun thing, smart thing, good thing, legitimate thing to not be bored. Continue to get those three hearty meals a day, those three great laughs a day. You protect yourself. You protect the loved ones around you. Until next time, folks, I'm your man, Stephen M. Smith. And until next time, you have been listening to In My Own Words.